so many of the car problems and issues that I see can be related to cold start problems, cold start wear and tear. And a lot of it is just when people start the car and mistreat the engine out of ignorance. It's something they've always done and they don't appreciate that they're building up a big problem for themselves in the long term. So it would help to understand what this problem is, why it happens, what's happening inside the engine during that essential cold start period. And also it'd be helpful to define what a cold start start is what a short journey is because it's these short journeys that are really badly damaging engines. So how serious is it? Damage varies from catastrophic failure on high mileage, often abused engines to minor problems and niggles, poor running, poor starting, idling problems and damage to particulate filters or catalysts in the exhaust system. Even things like the car battery doesn't really like lots of short journeys. So in this video, we're just going to define what a short journey is and help you to understand what's going on so you can build this mechanical sympathy that we need to just make sure that we can make our engine last as long as possible and I really don't want to make you absolutely paranoid about starting the engine. It just requires every single one of us to understand the potential for causing a long-term wear and tear on our engine that can be avoided or mitigated to a large degree. So to start with, what is a short journey? We're often talking about short journeys. You should avoid short journeys. But what are they? Is it five minutes or 10 minutes? Well, it's impossible to quantify exactly what a short journey is because it depends on the engine, on the drive, on the temperature. So the critical thing that we need to get in our heads is that a short journey is any journey where most of it has been done on a cold engine. If the engine has not had a chance to warm up to its operating temperature and operate at that warmed up temperature for a period of time, that's a short journey. So we've moved from an exact time definition to something more flexible that helps us to understand the need to warm the engine up and avoid the potential problems that happen during this essential cold start period that you typically get at the start of these short journeys. So in winter time, engine warm up can take much longer. Again, it depends on the engine. Some engines do warm up very, very quickly. My 1.4 TFSI does seem to warm up extremely quickly. Um, certainly the temperature bars are up to three or four bars after a very, very short period of driving. But I've had other cars and I've needed to drive for 10 or 15 minutes in order to just nudge those temperature bars. Now, some of that is in the way the car reads the temperature of the coolant. In the main, most cars have a temperature gauge on the dashboard. So that's really what we've got to go by. So we can discuss at great length how the importance of oil temperature over water temperature. But few of us have actually got an oil temperature reading in our car to make any sort of decision on. So we've just got to go with what we've been provided. So an engine's typical operating temperature. So we're talking about the coolant temperature inside the engine. And it should hover at about 90 degrees centigrade. That's about 194 degrees Fahrenheit. That is going to vary a little bit depending on the engine, the engine design, also how the thermostat is calibrated. Now, most thermostats in cars have a blue area, a red area, and somewhere in the middle. And the somewhere in the middle is what you should be aiming at for knowing that the engine is up to operating temperature and you can drive it hard. When it's in the blue, that's really the danger zone. That's when the engine is really trying to warm up. So what's going on during this essential warm up period? Um, why does that cause damage to the engine? Please boot the like button. That really does help us to get out there. So when the engine starts off, it hasn't got any readings from the exhaust. You've got an O2 sensor in the exhaust sniffing for oxygen. From that reading, the engine will know how much fuel to inject, how efficiently the engine is burning and can keep everything running efficiently. Now, those O2 sensors do not work when they're cold. They need to get up to operating temperature. So until they are, the ECU, the engine, the little computer inside is running blind, is making best guesses to keep the engine running smoothly. And because it's cold, Old, the tick over is set to a higher level to allow the car to warm up and also to resist stalling and other problems. So you start your car and this little bit before the closed loop system kicks in is very, very inefficient. Most engines start to run rich and you get a lot more vibration from the engine during this period of time. Also during this warm up time, and it's a problem that's associated really with older engines, modern direct inject engines don't suffer from this to the same degree. But 
but the vaporization of the fuel is less efficient. There's less heat in the intake, in the cylinders. So the fuel takes longer to fully vaporize. So that may also lead to this dirty burn that you get of the fuel, which creates a lot more soot than it should. So while the engine is running in this state, you're dumping a lot more soot into the intake. If you've got an EGR system, if you've got a particulate filter on the exhaust or even a catalyst, these really don't like this inefficient burn and you can damage those components by just allowing the soot to build up too much or allowing unburnt fuel into something like the catalyst, which can really deteriorate the structure of the catalyst itself. The other big issue with cold engines is oil. Now, a lot of people feel that a fully synthetic oil is just as good cold as it is when it's warm. Well, things have moved on. Oils are much better at protecting the engine when it's cold and it does take a fraction of a second for the oil to circulate around the engine and provide that initial protection. But synthetic oils are not magic. They will not reach their optimum viscosity and lubricate the engine properly until there is a little bit of warmth in the engine. So the oil is really out of braid. It's not going to lubricate the engine as the manufacturer intended. So the wear and tear on the metal components inside the engine are going to be greater until that oil is up to its specification. So what's going on inside the engine? Well, everything's cold, metal's cold, and it expands as it gets warm. So you've got your pistons, the piston rings, and the cylinder walls. Now, when everything's cold, there's a bigger gap between the sides. So as the piston reciprocates, it moves up and down around the crank. It has this extra sideways movement can create a few issues. It can increase the wear on the cylinder walls. The rings can take a little bit of a beating, particularly on one side where there's a little bit more pressure and a little bit more motion as that piston is coming down. All engines are more noisy when it's cold and most of that is down to this piston slap. So most engines do suffer from piston slap to a certain degree, but if the wear and tear is accelerated, that is going to become much worse of a problem. And you may even start to see a loss of compression on those cylinders where this wear has been allowed to run away with itself over a period of time. So another thing during this cold, short journey drive is condensation and oil dilution. So when the engine is running inefficiently, there's not much heat in the engine, there's not much heat in the engine oil. A lot of the vapors that are collecting inside the engine from the incomplete combustion, just from the cold atmosphere as it had condensed on the cylinder walls, and also the fuel that's going into the cylinders, the gaps around the piston rings and the cylinder wall, is wider than the manufacturer intended. So there's more scope there for blow by. So these things are going into the oil and they'll just collect in the oil unless the oil gets up to temperature and has an opportunity to burn these off or, or vaporize them, allow them to evaporate back into the crankcase. So that's going to degrade the performance of the oil. I've done a video on oil dilution. So if that's something that interests you or worries you, have a look at that video. Some cars are more susceptible to this than others. But over time, that's going to exacerbate engine wear. You're going to be reducing the life of the engine just through oil dilution. So cold weather and cold starts and short journeys puts a lot more strain on the car's battery. So starting the engine takes a lot of juice from the battery. If it's winter time, you're using your lights more and generally you want to be warm. So you've got the heater on, maybe the seat heaters if you're lucky enough to have such a luxury in your car the heaters for the windows as well to clear the fog off of those. You may even be running the air conditioning to reduce the fog inside the car because it, it's quite efficient and quite good at doing that. But this all means the battery is doing a lot more work. And if you're only doing short journeys, there's not much juice going back into the battery. So if you're not careful, you're running a deficit. Every time you go out, you're taking more juice out of the battery than you are putting back into it. And when the battery is low and it's cold, it's not going to perform very well at all. And it's going to degrade raid more quickly. So that can actually accelerate the deterioration on the battery and the battery cells itself. So another reason to avoid these short journeys really is just to prolong the life of the battery to make sure the battery has got enough energy in it and it's not struggling all the time to start the car. You're also wasting fuel. Fuel efficiency is much worse during this startup phase. So just doing short journeys, if you added up say 200 miles of short journeys and compared that with one run of 200 miles, you will see a massive massive difference in the fuel economy. It can be to the order of 20, 25% more fuel is used 
on those multiple short journeys than on that long journey. So as well as damaging the engine or accelerating the wear and tear on the engine, it's going to have an impact on your pocket. If you can combine all of those short journeys into one day, even if they're not consecutive, but your series of short trips, most of them are now on an engine that is being warm, has cooled down a little bit, that's going to be better than having all those separate trips spread out over multiple days and those multiple short journeys. So your catalyst requires heat in the exhaust in order to work properly. So it's not gonna be working very efficiently for probably about five to 10 minutes on most engines. You need to get that heat into the catalyst in order for it to work effectively. And I've already mentioned the problem of unburnt fuel going into the catalyst. That creates a big problem for most modern catalysts. At the very least, it's coating the catalyst catalytic elements so they're not able to react with the exhaust gases and in the worst case scenarios it can raise the temperature i've actually seen catalysts glowing bright red where the excess fuel has gone into them and it started to burn inside the catalyst and that's led to degradation of the catalyst itself then we've got particulate filters these are little filters in the exhaust that trap all of the big soot particles and the theory is it will get hot enough to burn those off. It will run a regeneration. But if you're only doing short journeys, the first problem is you're dumping more soot into these particular filters because the engine is running less efficiently and it's dumping more soot out. But also it's not getting up to temperature to burn that soot off. So it's gonna spike. You're gonna build up the soot inside the exhaust much more quickly if you only do short journeys. And that's why a lot of people buying diesel cars are advised to avoid particulate filters if they only do short journeys. Now, I'm told that DPFs have come a long way over time and they're much more efficient and less problematic than they used to be. But now we've got particulate filters on everything. Whenever you buy a gasoline or petrol car now, I think it was about 2017, 2019, that sort of ballpark when they started adding these particulate filters to the petrol or the gasoline engines. And I'm told that these are much more efficient, and much more effective. And the way that these engines burn is very different to diesel engines. So there is less soot produced and manufacturers expect those particulate filters to last a very long lifetime within the car. So hopefully they won't be as much of a problem, but these short journeys are really gonna add to the problem. It's not gonna get up to temperature in order to burn off those particles that it's been collecting. So short journeys seem convenient, we're all a bit lazy, let's face it. That walk to the corner shop in cold weather is much nicer if you can turn it into a drive to the corner shop in cold weather. But just take a moment to think about what that's doing to the long-term life of your engine. Is it degrading the oil? Is it increasing the wear and tear unnecessarily? Are you spending a lot more money on fuel just to get round the corner to the corner shop? So think carefully. Someone said to me, if you like your engine, you'll walk. So the idea behind that phrase really is if you're able to walk you should really it's not really a job for your engine you're just being particularly lazy if you use your engine for those short journeys but we've seen the damage that happens we understand now what a short journey is the requirement to get the engine up to temperature i've done other videos on warming up the engine and little tips to get you up to operating temperature more quickly and um, please boot that like button that really does help us to get out there appreciate all the support all the comments let me know what your thoughts are on this topic and if you've had any problems with cold starts short journeys Journeys. and whether you do lots of short journeys and you've had problems or whether mainly your commute is quite a long one and that's enough to keep your engine in good condition and I've lined this video up for you and if you haven't subscribed please do so because we'd love you to stay tuned to the channel thanks for watching see you in this next video